Hello, this is Peter Richardson with another CounterPoint Conversation. Uh, and I'm delighted to be with two old friends of mine, Hanti Sanio and Sami Pinamaki, both from Yola, uh, Finnish company. We're talking here about a, a device that they've built. One of you guys can basically kind of introduce what it is. Yeah, thank, thank you, Peter. This is a, a personal AI computer. Basically, it handles all your data and it stores all your data. It runs a small AI model there. So it's in the background all the time processing tasks, allocating tasks to you also to be approved and uh, handling your emails, messages, uh, basically everything to make your work and uh, life easier. Okay, so I mean, we're, we're here at the AI 360 conference and one of the uh, challenges that was discussed by a, a number of the panelists today was, you know, as we kind of move to this mode where we're using agentic models mm. to try and, you know, get away from the app based environments that, that we've come to expect in the, in the, in the smartphone world. That one of the challenges is that you run into this situation where, um, you know, uh, an AI framework may not be able to interrogate your, for example, your WhatsApp messages because that's in an application that you can't, you can't access. Yeah. But I think you're, you're finding a way around this, right? So, yeah. So one of Yola's core technologies is app runtime, which initially has been developed to run Android run, uh, applications on Salesforce operating system. Uh, but now we run that solution also in this box, basically, and it uh, emulates Android operating system, so we can connect basically to any Android applications more directly. Maybe somebody can say a few words about. It. Sure, that's that's very interesting. Interesting itself. So essentially, we are running Salesforce Core in the device, so it's pure Linux OS in the device, and then we have our application runtime which is within the selfish core but because we have the operating system itself we control in and out all the traffic that goes in be it messages be it, be it location data be it push messages and so forth and we can intercept all that traffic that goes in and out from the android applications and use that uh, to process so that we actually create value for the end users by processing personal data also from the Android applications. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you're kind of hitting on one of the key issues that, that people are concerned about within the AI uh, story that we're, we're hearing, which is, you know, the management of personal data. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there are ways of doing this that, you know, we're hearing, for example, Apple, talking a lot about how they will, you know, keep personal data extremely private and local on the device. But, you know, there's, there's still quite a few things to be ironed out in that. Um, but uh, I mean, from, from, a, from a usage point of view, who do you foresee as being the, the sort of the primary users of a device like this, um, you know, at the first phase? And how do you see that developing over time? Well, myself. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm a, I'm an entrepreneur. I have uh, multiple startups. It means also that I have uh, multiple contexts which I need to shift uh, between the days. So this, I think, this device is designed for a busy person who is running busy, busy business, has multiple clients, and uh, needs help on managing the daily. Uh, kind of uh, tasks what you have basically that's that's our target uh, there's one interesting thing here what you mentioned about apple basically uh, apple is building this for your personal uh data basically the the management and they have uh, access to both uh, kind of uh, data into mac uh, and then iphone as well so they have this advantage of integrated system others don't and then each of us are having both personal data, but also business data. And uh, in order to build efficient AI assistant system, you need to combine both of them. And then you have really kind of a challenge that because you don't want your personal data to be in your company system. So in that case, this form factor that you actually store your all data into one box, whether it's business or or personal data is quite uh, ideal, actually.
So, uh, Antti, maybe you can uh, describe a sort of a typical, you know, a few typical use cases that you would foresee for this, you know, how you might, you know, I mean, as we were saying earlier, we're coming from a sort of very application driven environment, but mm. how would, how would that translate into, uh, into this device? Yeah. So let, let's assume that, um, this device knows everything about you. It knows also your location. Uh, it knows your, your payment details and everything basically. But it also runs all the applications what you are usually using. So now our normal user interface with a, with a phone or laptop is that we go, we select the application, we start selecting, okay, I want to order an Uber. Um, I, I do my thing with the user experience of the Uber application. But in, in the AI era, in the, this agentic, agentic AI era, you should not do that, basically. I should just say that, hey, uh, order, order an Uber here where I am at the moment. And it should do it in the background. It, 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 and that's the target what we are building with this device. And, and then suddenly your digital work life or free time becomes completely different. You can do things five times faster and you're getting rid of many of the things that we are nowadays consuming our time. I mean, there's there's been uh, companies that have you know emerged over the last few months, and I'm thinking here of companies like the Rabbit, mm -hmm. R, or the, yeah. you know the Rabbit R1 device that promised to do a lot of this uh, you know application free, intent based mm -hmm. UI type of thing. How, how is this different from what those guys were were promising? Well, uh, Rabbit came uh, early. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly as you said with their promises we come with a very careful approach actually we are first launching a developer device we'll have uh, 500 uh, developer devices coming here and we have already built a system which integrates to different applications out there so it's not like uh, anything experimental what we do we we deliver a ready product on 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 this and of course we had the experience from the operating system and from running the app runtime so we know exactly what we are doing with this uh, solution we've been quite lucky with the uh, small AI models becoming more and more powerful so that this kind of device is capable of running those models and this is actually exactly now I would say that uh, half a year ago it was not possible Correct. now it is yeah so it kind of shows how fast the industry yeah. is moving yes the... yeah okay I mean, Sammy, maybe you can talk about one of the other use cases that uh, you mentioned when we were talking earlier, which is using it essentially as a, uh, you know, in a meeting room. You have multiple people in a meeting room being able to. Yeah, that's one of the that. things, as, as Antti mentioned there earlier, we are, what we are really looking for is to, to, to iron out this, this product now in particular for the SME sector, for small and medium enterprises and entrepreneurs like, like we are uh, ourselves as well. So, so, and, and that's one use case really that, uh, what we have actually already in this first version of the device is that we have dual stereo microphones, digital microphones on both sides of the product. So it can create a spatial uh recording of a meeting for example it record would record uh confidential uh, discussions with clients or let's say board meetings uh and and create a, a memo out of the meeting summarize it create a nice pdf send it to the members of the of the board and ask that whether this was okay summarized as so that uh, we can then write it off as, as as actual official minutes of the of the meeting so these kind of capabilities are are exactly kind of use cases that we are looking for the box and this is why it's so important that we run a local uh, model in the device not in the cloud but actually in the device so that you can really trust on it you can touch on it start recording stop recording and that's it you absolutely know that you control it maybe also to add here the uh, one use case what we didn't discuss is that it's also a team collaboration tool so um, if you, it's your own server but you can invite your colleagues or friends to work with you on it so for example if you have photos here you can get, grant them access to that photo folder or if you have a document you are working on writing uh, a document you can invite others to work on the same document you don't need to go to cloud you just share it from here okay 
I mean, could you, you know, piece together a number of different devices like this? So you had, you know, in a slightly larger organization, you could have yeah, I, multiple I, of these? Yeah, I could imagine that even a larger organization could have these as for individual teams or business managers, and then they could have a kind of a server larger server rack basically for the for the kind of a consolidating the data and that could be quite optimal structure also it kind of keeping the uh, information walls in place basically so that uh, teams have their access to their data and then carefully structured and consolidated data is only shared in the server level because this will also become a problem that how do you build the kind of a information walls inside the corporations not everything not everybody should be accessing every data right as well yeah. all right and uh last couple of questions so uh this is a development device essentially for for uh, well developers developers so it's at the same time a development device and right. for the developers so this is one of a few that you're building right now right yeah well you have a commercial yeah platform. yeah certainly so we want to as Antti was saying there that we want to be absolutely certain that it's ready for the market for what we talk about commercial market so so what we do here is that we do this on purpose on phases so the first phase is targeted for the for the for the fans community the hackers around us that's been there quite a while and they are excited about this product so we actually make only 500 of the first first unit here uh geared towards the developers together with them we discuss openly about the product the use cases how it would fit to their different kind of environments and so forth and we iterate the the, the value proposition and the uses of the product uh we have initial thinking uh that the commercial version will be targeted first to sme sector like mentioned here earlier and that would be then towards the q1 next year 2025 okay and how can you know if someone's interested in learning more about this how can they get in touch with you yola.com our website and uh and and there's information there and uh you can pre-order it as if you're interested as a developer so we have a pre-order campaign at the at the moment ongoing and we start shipments in um in a bit more than a month All right. now, so so yola.com if you're interested in getting one of these devices that's where you go so yeah auntie Sami, thanks so much. Thank you. And this is Peter Richardson signing off from the uh, AI360 conference.